First, let's look at a gate here, sometimes it's called a noise gate. This one's a pretty comprehensive one, but the most basic ones might just have these two options here, which is threshold and range. So with this turn on, I'm gonna bring up this kick drum and you can hear, I can hear the side stick there, I can hear a little bit of hi-hat as well. So clearly this is not a magical mic, it, it, even though it's a kick drum mic, it's placed by the kick drum. There are other things that are bleeding through there. We can fix this with a noise gate and by lowering the threshold, here's what we can do. You hear other, other, stars, other stuff starts to going away, right? If you set it too high like this, then nothing will get through. And if you just bring this down a little bit, okay, now a kick drum will come out. But you'll notice those, those grace notes, boom, boom that leading kick drum note is actually not strong enough to get through there. So that's why threshold is very, very important. If you set it too low, then everything will come through, right? Set it too high and only the very loudest hits will come through. So example for, you know, on a snare drum, if you're doing a, a, a small side stick, then that probably won't get through uh, if this was, if we were compressing a snare drum uh, channel. So threshold is the big one in a noise gate. So just bring that down so that you can get all the notes that you want through and all of the notes of a lower um, level will get filtered out through this gate. Now, a lot of gates will have this range here. Some may not, but if, if you're lucky enough to have it here, a range basically decides, okay, anything that's filtered out that doesn't meet that threshold, are, are you gonna just pull it all out or are you just gonna reduce it just by a few dBs? So now we can hear that background there. If you don't be so draconian with just pulling it all out, then you can go meet somewhere kind of down the middle. So you can hear how a, a noise gate, uh, once you set the threshold, basically anything uh, below that threshold, the, the signal is either basically muted like this or reduced by a number of dBs. This is kind of like an automated mute fairy <laughs> that just kind of sits there and mutes the channel when nothing's going through it and then unmutes it when it sees a signal, drastically cutting down on all the background uh, signal. Now, the background signal really could be anything, you know, perhaps drums leaking through a particular channel, most commonly called uh, drum bleeding. I mean, think about it this way. If you have all these open mics around a drum kit and they are picking up other drums, not just the drum that they're next to, but here's the trick. The drum that the mic is right up on is gonna be louder than the other guys there. So dropping down that gate threshold will allow only the loudest drum to get through and then, you know, to get through that gate, cutting out all the others. Actually, another use is a noisy guitar amp with guitarists adding a bunch of stomp boxes to their mix. You can sometimes have a really noisy signal when it comes out of the amp. So we now have the basic idea of a gate down to these two most basic controls, which is threshold and range. And range basically takes the, the basically gates, whatever's below that threshold uh, and reduces it by a certain number of dBs. The next most common set of controls are the attack and the release. These control how quickly the gate opens and then closes. A short attack and release is like a gate that just opens and closes. Um, let me bring this up here. If we were to do this super fast, again, you can hear some kind of clicks there. Now, let me just bring that back a little bit here. And in fact, I'm gonna close that all the way down so we can really hear this gate. So let's play around with the release. If your release is really short, then the gate could kind of close during the natural decay of a signal and sound a little unnatural like it kind of does now. If we slow down that release, you'll get a better result. If it's too slow, then the gate will all pretty much always be open. You don't want that. So let me pull this back here. I normally go here and then start. Yeah, probably around there is good. Now the attack on the other end of the signal, and in this case, you just wanna have this as fast as possible without causing clicks. 
Now, some low frequencies, let me pull this down, some low frequencies take a while to complete a full cycle. For example, a 100 hertz bass note takes uh, 10 milliseconds to cycle through. So I would normally slow down the attack a little on signals that are low frequency heavy.